Hi there, Mark here again. And welcome to this build guide part one of my Tamiya Super Club Buster. I'm going to be building the grey edition, but don't worry, it's exactly the same as the standard version. So let's crack on with it. Okay, so step one says checking the RC equipment, but basically what we're really doing is setting the centre point for that servo. And whatever you do, do not miss out this stage because if you haven't got the servo in neutral, by the time you get to the end of the build and it's not right, it's going to be a nightmare to disassemble everything and to try and get to that servo uh, and uh, correct the setting. So, get the supplied ESC, connect it to your receiver, plug in your servo and basically connect it to a battery and turn it on. Get your transmitter, make sure that your steering trim is in neutral in the central position and give it a throw from left to right the servo moving and then let it center and then basically just turn it off and that's your servo centered onto step two which is attaching the servo horn but before we get into that just a quick note about the parts bags now normally on most modern Tamiya builds the guide would tell you to open parts bag A and then you carry on on the next steps using parts from bag A and then you open bag B and so on but uh, I've looked carefully through the manual and that is not the case for the Super Club Buster. Basically, yes, they're named bags A, you've got D, B, C, there's unnamed bags. But basically, I've looked through here for the first uh, real step of putting things together and they're not really from any particular bag. You've got to open all the bags up, basically, and uh, hunt around till you find the right parts. So that's what you've got to do. Undone the bags and throw them in some trays and uh, ferret through to find these parts, which I've just done. So the first thing you need to do is get this plastic part B3 or B4, this black one here, whichever fits the splines on your servo. And then it's simply a case of fitting two of these six mil ball joints. You see they're the brass ones, they are different to the darker coloured, larger eight mil ball joints, which are kind of a dark colour. Simply push those through the two holes and there's captive areas for the three mil nuts that go in the back. So that's that done. And simply get your servo, you've got the two plastic parts C7, which are those plastic parts there, and those are attached with the uh, 3x8 screws and washers. And basically, all we need to do now is make sure we get this orientated correctly. So if we copy the diagram, you want your part B3 or B4 in as close to an upright position as you can get. You'll never get it spot on, or I never normally can and then you need to use a screw that fits your servo and in this one it's going to be a machine screw I think it's an 8mm, 3mm screw and we just get that done up and that will be the end of this step and as you can see as I've started I'm not going to go through showing you how to screw every single piece together show you me screwing them all in because it's going to take forever so I'm just going to whiz through most of that part and just show you basically what goes where ok on to step 3 Step three says it's attaching the steering rods, but basically you've got to make them up first. So find out these longer rods, just match them up to the diagram. And as I always do, I recommend that you get all the parts that you need for the step ready in advance before you start fitting it all together. And you need these ball end connectors, which are F7s. They'll come on your coloured plastic tree there. Basically screw one on each end of the rod do them up against each other and then simply match it up to the diagram. Note the orientation, they are kind of 90 degrees different in alignment between the one and the other, as you can see. So make two of those and get your servo assembly there and we've got to attach that to part A5 with the two 3x8 screws and one washer. So fit the screw in the round hole first and then in the slotted hole put that in second with the washer on, like so. And then simply pop on your steering rods and you will need a decent set of long nose pliers to get these on because I tried and I couldn't get them on just by hand so they do need a good squeeze so that's the end of step three for step four we're going to need your chassis I'm going to be putting these uh, bubble connectors onto it with the these three metal plates so yeah let's do the side ones first and the big ones so the little plates so drop one in there and then get those darker of the large ball joints feed them through and into the plate 
and it looks like we're going to need a flathead screwdriver to do those up with so same on the other side so that's the floor and then don't forget as it shows here to trim off the little there's four little lugs that you need to trim off of the plastic which I've already done and uh, now it's time to get the four brass ball joints on they're going to attach to this place here so note the alignment where that slot is there and note the alignment to the chassis there's that raised area that uh, you need to get to that direction and then the plate in that direction just offer that up and then again we can locate those brass ball joints into the threaded holes in the plate let's get all four of those done so give all those a good nip up and then you need this plate here which is part A3 and again note the alignments of the holes you've got that lump in the chassis there and then you've got these three holes in that orientation and simply put a 10mm machine screw through each of the holes so there's four holes there and attach into a 3mm nut on the other side and these are captive holes so you won't need a spanner to hold that nut and at the end of that step it should look something like this Onto steps five and six, which is simply attaching the body posts or the body mounts. And it does also show fitting these stickers, which is number 14 and 21. So you've got that sticker on the front and the back. And then you've got your four by four by fours, one on each side. So get those stuck on first. And it does also show fitting the front bumper. Um, but I'm not actually going to fit this. Fit yours now if you want, but I'm going to spray this black because I don't like the plastic finish. So I'm leaving that off. I'll fit that on at the end with the body. So step five is simply this plastic part A1, which is a kind of brace that goes across there. And then the post, which is C4, which are attached by two 12 mil screws from underneath. So we'll just get those screwed in like so. And you can see two screws each side there. And it's exactly the same process for the rear body mount. Just make sure you get this part A6 with the bracket the right way round, like so and then I'll get those posts on with the four screws. So that's the rear post fitted. So straight on to step seven, which is attaching the servo that we prepared earlier. We just turn this round, flip it over, and your servo is going to mount onto those three holes you can see down there. So just pop the arms through those two holes, locate the servo, and then simply secure it with three three by twelve screws in those holes there for step eight we're going to attach the battery holder which is this part I think which is uh, A2 you need part C5 and we need to fit that in that position into A2 a bit fiddly and we've got to hold that in place with two of the little 8mm self tappers so that's C5 sitting inside there, a bit difficult to see but it is in there. Now we've just got to fit it onto the side of the chassis with four 12mm machine screws and the flange nuts. So make sure the chassis is the right way around so you've got the smaller post there at the back and then this is going to fit over this hole here with those four machine screws. And I don't think it matters which way around the battery holder goes. And it should look like that when it's done. Just a quick note here in the manual, uh, it shows from steps 9 to steps 26 that you need to repeat them to make two. So you need to do each of these steps uh, twice, basically. So it says there, I missed that when I first flipped through the manual. So yeah, um, we're going to perform each of these tasks twice until we get to step 26. So what we're going to do in step 9 and 10 is we're going to do the axle tube assemblies and we're going to attach those to um, the gearbox cases. Now obviously because we're doing this twice we need to make four of these. Um, I'll just show you the one. So first of all you need your drive shaft. You've got the, the short and the long. This is the short. It's exactly the same for the long one. Get your nasty e-clip and you need to fit that on the end with the uh, dog bone and on these when I can get to them I just press it down on the desk like that, it's much easier, it doesn't go flying off. Uh, we will need some pliers for the other end though. 
and you might see that I've put a bit of grease on here and that's just to stop it from corroding I've got the bearings as you know um, so I don't really need to grease it but yeah that will protect it just a bit get your 6mm washer put that up against the circlip you need part E1 and to part E1 you need to push your 1260 bushings or bearings one into each end like that and uh, push this through Note the dog bone is at this end where you've got your C cup or your C hub and there's our splined end coming out this end. You need another of those BD5 6mm washers up against the bearing and this is where we've got to put that pesky clip on to hold the shaft in place. Get me long nose pliers, fingers crossed. Yep, that went on nicely. Told you it was simple. So there you go, make four more. On to step 10, again this is a piece of cake. Basically we've got to locate this into the bigger half of the gearbox which is B10. And there is a little lug or pin, I don't know if you can see that, there in the plastic moulding. And that lines up with that smaller hole there you can see in the casing. So you can't get them on the wrong way around. Okay, so once that's in, what you need to do is get your 12mm screws, machine screws, fit them through from the inside. It's a bit fiddly, and attach your flanged 3mm nut. And again, with the, uh, the flange, it does bite into the plastic, so you don't really need a spanner to hold that. You should be able to do it up, so put the other three screws in and uh, make two of. So that's step 10 finish, which was the short of the actual tube. Um, yeah, so that's the short one there. And step 11 is a piece of cake, as I said. Same again. So basically, I'm not going to show this because it's exactly the same, but fitting the one with the long axle tube to part B9, which is the, the narrower part of the gearbox housing. So again, make two exactly like this. Okay, so moving swiftly on to steps. 12 and 13 which is attaching the gears and uh, I've already done the first one so that was a bit of practice it's going to end up looking like this so we start off with the one with the long um, axle stub and obviously the thin case and we're going to put all the gears into that now so we start off by getting these metal parts which are the counter shafts and then simply place one in that hole and one in the other then you want your 1260 bushing or bearing, put that over each of those, like so. Get your BG450 tooth counter gear and uh, put in your little 850 bearing or bushing in there and that goes on this first counter shaft. And you want plastic part B12, which is like a, a plastic sleeve that goes onto that Counter shaft, your 44 tooth counter gear sits over the top of that onto the bearing, it should mesh with the other one. Your 850 bearing or bushing into that. And that's step 12 complete. So straight on to 13, we're going to uh, be putting the differential in. Next thing to do is get your brass bevel joints and put it over there, like so. It should go up against that circlip. Then you want your large bevel gear. You can see I've already greased all of these up. It sits on there like so. You need the 3 by 14 metal shaft. Get some grease on that. Then you want, need one of your tiny little small bevel gears. Put that on there. Make sure it's uh, moving smoothly on that grease. Get your differential spur gears. You can see I've put the other two bevel gears in there. And you need to pop that shaft into the slots. This is quite a tight fit. You know, say, so put the other two in like so, grease it all up, and that sits on that shaft and should mesh up with all the other gears. The other large bevel gear that should just sit and mesh up like so. And finally, get your last brass bevel joints, and that should sit into that hex like so. As I say, 
make two. Straight on to step 14, which is actually assembling two halves of the gearboxes together. Um, the one really important thing to note here is this, see that arrow there and that little 3mm nut? Make sure you put that 3mm nut into that gearbox casing. If you forget to do that, it's going to be a real pain later to add that in. So yeah, make sure that goes in. I think that's all we need to make sure we do before we get this narrow half with all the gears in and the wider half and basically carefully put the two halves together he says okay it clicks together quite nicely I did have to turn one of the axles to get it to line up but it's all gone together okay so, so now that's together I just need to get the right screws the machine screws that are going to go into the three mil plain nuts they're all captive so we won't need a box spanner and all we needed two of the uh, darker 30 mil screws go into these holes here so that one and that one 12 mil screw into that one and then two 15 mil screws one in that hole and one in that hole and that's all you need at this moment in time so you've just got your five captive nuts, one there, there, there and there in the other side and make two of. So as both gearboxes are made up now, I think this is a good point to draw a close to part one of this build guide. I hope you've enjoyed watching it, I hope you found it useful and uh, I hope you join me in part two. Cheers, bye.